Today we will be dealing with the topic of sporophytic self incompatibility which comes under the pollination control mechanism. So if you like the content which we are providing please do like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So let's get started. Before starting let us have a brief introduction about myself. I am your educator Rupa Amin. I have completed my undergraduation study from University of Agricultural Sciences Bangalore. I have completed my masters in genetics and plant breeding from Indian Agricultural Research Institute New Delhi. I have secured an All India rank of 6 during my JRF exam and 28 during my SRF exam and also I have cleared ASRB net in genetic subject and also I have got 8 gold medals during my UG. Let us start uh, today's topic that is a pollination control self incompatibility mechanisms. So in the earlier session we have seen gametophytic self incompatibility. I hope you guys have understood that mechanism clearly. Today we will be dealing with the sporophytic self incompatibility. So sporophytic self incompatibility, the major thing here we notice that the incompatibility mechanism is controlled by the genotype of the plant on which the pollen is produced. So in gametophytic self incompatibility we have seen that this, the, the incompatibility mechanism is controlled by the genotype of your gamete itself. But here it is controlled by the genotype of the plant on which your gamete is producing or your pollen is producing. So that means let us say that you have a S1, S2 plant that is a genotype of your plant. Let us take this as your plant and uh, sorry this is your flower with this as the stigma. This is your anther. So below you will have your ovary. Let this be your petals. So in the ovary, the female gametes will be produced. Or your female gametes are situated here as a gametophyte that is embryo sac which is having a female gamete. So let us say that this plant genotype is S1, S2. So then your female gamete either it could have S1 or S2 since you know that gamete is a haploid. So if it produces the pollen also from this anther then what will be the genotype of the pollen? That is S1 and S2. But in this mechanism what happens? In this pollen, the self incompatibility mechanism is controlled by the genotype of the mother plant. Let us see, this genotype is particularly responsible for the production of trypheme A. Let us take this trypheme as a trypheme A. So if plant is producing, let us take this, S1 is dominant to S2. So S1 is uh, encoding for a trypheme A molecule. So this trypheme A will get deposited on the pollen. It will get deposited on your pollen coat. So that whatever the self incompatibility mechanism is happening that is controlled by this trypheme now not by the genotype of your gamete or the pollen. That means this trypheme is majorly involved in whether the uh, pollen is accepted by the stigma or not. So this is a major difference between your gametophytic self incompatibility that is in gametophytic self incompatibility this S1 and S2 will together or will individually control the self incompatibility mechanism that is whether the pollen is going to be accepted or not is decided by S1 and S2 but here the female plant produces some of the substance that will be deposited on the pollen coat. That substance is going to 
decide whether the pollen is accepted or not. That is the difference between the gametophytic self incompatibility and the sporophytic self incompatibility. So this mechanism is first reported by. So first reported by Huggies and Babcock in Crepis Petida. So it was also been uh, reported by Justin in Parthenia. So what are all the major features of this self-incompatibility that is porophytic self-incompatibility? We will see one by one. That is uh, here it is controlled by SLA. The self-incompatibility mechanism is controlled by SLA which is having a multiple sorry S gene which is having a multiple alleles. So it is believed that so the number of alleles which are controlling the gametophytic self-incompatibility is more than sporophytic self-incompatibility. That is we will get to see less number of alleles in case of sporophytic self-incompatibility. That is a major thing. Let us for uh, for now we will take four alleles that is S1, S2, S3 and S4. So if we take the uh, dominance order of this S1 will be dominant to S2, S2 will be dominant to S3 and S3 dominant to S4. So next uh, the stigma surface. The stigma surface will be papillate that is it will be having a small air like projections. The stigma surface will have a small air like projections that projections covered by your pellicle or a cuticular wax. So papillate surface will be there that is a air like structures will be there that air like structure will be covered by a cuticular wax or a papillate. So this is the stigma. So what about uh, your pollen grains? Pollen grains are released at three nucleate stage. That is when generative nucleus divides into two male gametes. Two male gametes. The pollens are released here. And the substance, whatever the substance, as I have mentioned earlier, let us take trifin. So if this substance is actually involved in self-incompatibility mechanism, this substance will be synthesized and deposited before your pollen meiosis takes place. So you know that pollen mother cell, when it undergoes meiosis, it will produce four haploid microspores. So before the production of the spore itself, this substance will be produced as as and when the spores are produced. Let us take four spores are there. As and when the spores are produced, the trifin will coat them. So that the trifin is the one which is ultimately regulating the self-incompatibility mechanism. So let us see how it will happen. They will say that in this system we can see only two kinds of self-incompatibility mechanisms that is either they will be fully compatible or fully incompatible. There is no case of partial compatibility or partial incompatibility and when it is your female and male gamete they might have either dominant or dominant function or it can act as a dominant and it can act as a codominant or it can act as a codominant or it can act as a dominant or both act as a codominant any of the any kind of interaction between the pollen and the pistil is possible and here the stigma surface the stigma surface will be dry in case of gametophytic self incompatibility your stigma surface is wet so that's why there the pollen hydration won't be affected the pollen would be able to germinate on the stigma but its growth will be arrested in the stylar 
region in the stylar region the growth of the pollen tube will get arrested in case of gametophytic self incompatibility since the stigma surfaces but it can able to provide the germination whereas in case of uh, sporophytic self incompatibility the stigma surface is dry so it needs to gets hydrated for the pollen to successfully germinate and affect the fertilization that is also one of the mechanism we can see in this and uh, what else we can see in this okay so this is the major things uh, that we will see in this mechanism so we'll see how incompatibility is actually happening so let me give you a clear picture of this so as i have already drawn your stigma with the ovule so this is your stigma as i said it will be papillate with pellicle or cuticular wax so you have your female gamete let us take this plant as a s1 s2 so you will have a two kinds of gametes that can be produced in this s1 or s2 female gametes and the same plant is producing the pollen so then the pollen will be s1 and s2 but in a sporophytic self incompatibility we know that the pollen genotype will control the self incompatibility mechanism let us say the pollen is getting deposited with the trypheme that is the mother is synthesizing some trypheme and depositing on the pollen that will be your outer layer of the pollen let us say outer layer of the pollen and above which there is one more layer that layer we call it as a lipid coating superficial layer that is a lipid coating superficial layer will be there below which your trypheme whatever the components which are there in the trypheme which is synthesized from the mother plant will actually responsible for the self incompatibility mechanism of the pollen so let us take another plant which is producing let us take another plant which is s3 s4 genotype so whatever the gamete it will produce let us take s3 and s4 gamete is producing but let us say it is producing some kind of different trypheme with trypheme b let us have trypheme b here trypheme a here so these gametes will carry trypheme b on them trypheme b so that whatever it might it might be its genotype that doesn't matter but it will be trypheme b which is controlling the self incompatibility mechanism how trypheme b has actually synthesized and deposited it is based on the genotype of the mother plant so let us take this plant as a s3 s4 and s3 is dominant to s4 so that s3 is encoding for this trypheme b and trypheme b is getting deposited on the pollen surface so let us see what happens now so i have told that is uh, the stigma surface will be dry here it needs to be hydrated for germination to happen let us say when the cross pollen comes and land here that is the pollen carrying s3 genotype with trypheme 
B molecule. So whenever it is of a different self incompatibility group, I told you above which one more layer will be there. That is a lipid coating superficial layer. Whenever the pollen belongs to the different self incompatibility group, this superficial layer, whatever the lipid superficial layer will be there, that fuses with the pellicle of the stigma. So fusing of this will lead to the breakdown of this trifin layer and the trifin will flow out. So what happens? The trifin is nothing but it is a gel like substance. The trifin will flow out. It is a gel like substance that it, it will hydrate the stigma surface. So hydration is achieved. That is a favorable condition for the germination of the pollen. Now due to the hydration, the pollen will germinate. This is the first step. As soon as it starts germinating, it will produce the cutinase enzyme. So why cutinase is needed? We know that the stigma surface is pellicular or cuticular wax. It is deposited with the cuticular wax. So it should degrade the cuticular wax in order to go inside. So it will synthesize the cutinase enzyme and degrade the cuticular wax what is there in the stigma surface so that it could able to grow its pollen tube down the style. So we can say that here incompatibility mechanism happens at the stigma surface that is a cytopollen arrest we can say. Whereas in case of your gametophytic self incompatibility it is a stylar region. So the gamete or the pollen can able to successfully germinate but its growth will be arrested at the stylar region. But in case of uh, sporophytic self incompatibility it will be arrested at the stigma surface itself. Let us say that is the same pollen is going and fertilizing. So this trifin A these pollens which are carrying the same genotype that is S1 and S2 are deposited with the trifin A encoded by this S1 allele being dominant. So let us say when this pollen goes and land on the stigma surface, what happens? The plant can recognize the compound synthesized by itself that is trifin A which belongs to itself so that what will happen? It will avoid its addition. How? The superficial coating that is a lipid superficial layer will be there. Na? That won't break. So if it is not breaking then trifin is not releasing. Trifin is not releasing then hydration is not happening. That is going to prevent your germination. That is a one mechanism or it might prevent even if it is able to germinate or it might prevent the synthesis of your cutinase enzyme that your germinating tube doesn't grow any further into the stylar region. These are the two more re main mechanism by which the self pollen will be rejected. This is uh, in brief about how the mechanism of sporophytic self incompatibility is actually happening. So next uh, we will see how different genotypes will behave with their self incompatibility group. In this uh, I can say that a self incompatibility group can have two different genotypes. How? That is, let us say S1, S2 plant is producing a pollen. That is S1 and S2. But S1 is dominant to S2 and it is a sporophytic system. That is, S1 is controlling the mechanism. Let us say trifin A is synthesized by S1. That is, Trifin A is deposited on both of them. So they belongs to the same self incompatibility group that is controlled by a single compound. But they have a two different genotype. When we look into the genotype, they are of two different genotypes. But they belong to the same self incompatibility group. Next, uh, let us see the crosses in this. Let us take S1, S2 crossed with S2, S3. So let us have this as a female and male. 
so male will produce two different gametes but they will all have the substance synthesized by s2 i'm not mentioning trifin again and again so let us say s2 is encoding some compound a that will be deposited on the surface so female will be let us take codominant in nature so since female is codominant all gamete is going to behave as a s2 right so s2 allele is already there so it is going to reject there is no compatibility there is no compatibility that is it is incompatible completely incompatible let us take the reciprocal cross of this s2 s3 with s1 s2 reciprocal is nothing but exchanging the male and the female so let uh, it s2 s3 which was before male be your female now s1 s2 be your male so s1 is going to s1 genotype and s2 genotype but they all will behave as a s1 in their incompatibility mechanism so let this be codominant that is s2 and s3 so since all this will behave as a s1 there is no matching allele in this so that they can affect the fertilization that is when s1 is coming and fertilizing s2 it can be s1 and s2 when s1 is coming and fertilizing s3 it can be s1 and s3 when s2 is coming and fertilizing s2 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 and s2 s3 i hope you all got this how i made this crosses so when we look into the progenies we can say that i have recovered s2 s3 that is a female parent s1 s2 that is a male parent in this sporophytic self incompatibility system there is a possibility that we can recover both the parents and there will be a production of the homozygotes we can see homozygotes in this sporophytic self incompatibility mechanism so whereas in case of your gametophytic self incompatibility only male parent can be recovered and homozygotes are not seen in case of gametophytic self incompatibility next we'll see what happens to the polyploidy condition in case of gametophytic self incompatibility monofactorial gametophytic self incompatibility can be overcome by the polyploidy condition whereas your bifactorial multifactorial cannot be overcome by cannot be overcome by polyploidy condition so in cell, sporophytic self incompatibility polyploidy cannot break the self incompatibility mechanism how let us see i have a1 a2 a3 a4 as a female parent tetraploid let this be alpha tetraploid a3 and a4 so whatever may be the genotype of the pollen let us say a1 is dominant to a2 a2 is dominant to a3 a3 is dominant to a4 so a1 is encoding for a compound a so irrespective of the pollen genotype all the pollen whatever that is produced in this will have a on their surface so whatever the pollen that goes and tries to fertilize this they will all be failing to fertilize that is why we say that polyploidy cannot break this self incompatibility mechanism what else we have in this uh, system homozygotes and reciprocal uh, cross differences we have seen these are the major features that we can see in the sporophytic self incompatibility 
in the next class uh, we can see how or whatever the system we have talked till now gametophytic self incompatibility and sporophytic self incompatibility we have seen what happens in their uh, anatomical or morphologically we have seen what is happening and how the self incompatibility is controlling so when we look into the molecular level we have something interesting that is going on so in the next session we will be dealing with this molecular mechanism of the self incompatibility and what are all the ways through which we can overcome this self incompatibility mechanism so next uh, we have relevance of this self incompatibility so what is the use or uh, disuse or disadvantages of having this self incompatibility use when is what and it is coming to pineapple all your commercial pineapple whatever the clones are there they are all self incompatible in nature so if it is a self compatible one that will set c that would be not preferable so all the pineapple that we see they are self incompatible and reproduce through parthenocarpically that is they don't have the seed that is the advantage when it comes to the pineapple so when you want to derive an hybrid for that you need inbreds so while producing the inbreds if you have this self incompatibility that would be a nuisance for you why you need to self fertilize the lines to make it more homozygous before producing the hybrid so in such a cases it will be a nuisance to the breeder and if you have a two self incompatible lines but they are cross compatible you can plant them adjacent side by side and whatever the seeds that you get from both the plants will be your hybrids that is one of the importance so these are the mechanisms and the relevance of self incompatibility in your crop systems so that's it for today we will be meeting in the next session before ending the session i have a bit of information to share with all of you that is we have a two sets of complete mock test for all the different subjects that is available for free in our mobile application as well as the website so if you want to attend this mock test you can always download our mobile application or you can give it a try on the online also through the website so it is available for free make a use of it and you can always give it a try whenever you are free along with that if you are particularly looking for a concise material precise lecture series for your plants and subject that is for your icar jrf exam 2024 you can always take our master course plants in 2024 which is a most demanding course of this current year or if you are only looking for the mock test bundle to make your preparation much more stronger you can also take our mock test bundle which is prepared according to the updated version of your icar jrf exam 2024 so which is available at the 669 699 rupees you can always take that so before taking the course or the mock test bundle you can always visit our website and you can always download the content or the brochure which we are giving to look whatever the content which we are providing and also you can visit to the youtube channel and see the video lectures which are already available if you feel it it is really worthful you can always contact us and take the course so if you get any queries or any problem with respect to the mobile application or attending the mock test you can always contact us through the below display whatsapp number that is available here you can always contact us thank you for today